As you can tell from the title of this video so far, it's not a very happy video. There's no other way to put it. My Toyota GT86 is dead. Now, um, before we get into the details of what happened and how it happened, let's actually go and take a look at the car. I haven't actually seen it for a couple of weeks now, maybe almost more than a month. So let's go take a look at it and let's get into what happened. And here she is. Uh, it's been a long time. She spent some time outside, some time inside. So there's a lot of uh, rain droplet marks, but that's okay. Yeah, here she is. Been sitting like this for the better part of a month now. So yeah, basically uh, on April 1st, I went to Mobara Twin Circuit again uh, for my second ever track day with the car. It was uh, YouTuber Albo's uh, racetrack event day. So I was really excited to go out on the track for my second ever proper uh, track day with this car. Now, obviously, you know, it is an automatic, but you can switch it into the uh, manual shifter mode. So you could still have some fun on the track. It was a great, great track car, honestly, for, for just grip driving, obviously. So, so yeah, I was really excited to better my uh, previous lap record time for myself, obviously. I think I did a 56.489 or something like that, best lap in November. And one of the things that was really holding me back that day were the brakes because I was already on super worn out brake pads. So in time for April 1st uh, track day event, I was able to get, um, let's, let's take a look. I was able to order these new, uh, kind of like an upgrade slitted endless rotor, um, obviously on all four corners the back and the front, and I got brand new uh, fresh brake pads as well. You can still see the uh, Endless logo on them as well. And I even went as far as replacing the brake lines because back in November when I was doing that first track day, towards the end of the day, my brakes were completely cooked. They actually started smoking towards the end. So I was hoping to see if that's gonna really help improve uh, some of my time without adding any kind of like power or anything else like that. And Things were going really great uh, for the first 15 minute session. I just took a very easy first 15 minutes to really warm up the car before I started pushing it. It was already an extremely warm day, so I didn't really want to, you know, take a risk from the very start and go really, really hard. And, and we didn't even get to finish the full 15 minute session because there was a red flag. So we actually only drove for like 10 minutes or something like that. But I think it was enough to uh, really good, give the car a uh, proper warm up. After like a one hour break, um, it was time for the second 15 minute session. And I think I was only about two, three laps into that session when the problem started developing. And I had to go off the track immediately because the car was not good enough to uh, continue. So yeah, let me uh, show you what exactly is wrong. And there's only one way to really show you. Let's hop in the car. And yeah, if you turn up the volume now, you'll be able to hear it. Let's get the engine off before it explodes. As you can tell, the knocking sound is really, really bad. I actually feel like it's gotten even worse since it's been sitting here, but um, yeah, we, I haven't even asked or bothered for a mechanic to actually open it and check how bad the damage is. Seems like it's either a spun bearing or a spun rod. So the knocking is really, really bad. And yeah, that, that engine is dead. So after a bit of like uh, consulting with a few friends and mechanics here and there, I actually had one person uh, listen to the engine sound, but I wasn't going to pay anybody to actually open it up and tear it open. I was basically given three options. I was given three options. Number one option was to overhaul the engine and basically fix the broken engine. Um, they, I was quoted about $10,000 for that, which is about a million yen, so a little bit less. The other option that I was given was to swap an engine, so basically buy a secondhand engine and swap that one in. Uh, that was also going to be probably around 10 grand in total as well. Again, another million yen. Or the third option that uh, one of the mechanics that looked at it was kind of like telling me that that's the best option was to just scrap the car and buy a completely new car. So trying to figure out what the best option uh, to go with is at the moment. It's not really an ideal time in my life to spend another 10 grand or on, on anything right now. Don't know. I'm afraid if I go with fixing the engine, I'm afraid that perhaps it's going to end up being more than I was quoted originally. Um, because nobody's actually looked at the inside and seen how bad it is. To actually swap in like another uh, engine, like a second-hand engine is probably just another ticking time bomb. You never know when that one's going to blow up and 
how it's been, you know, uh, maintained and whether, you know, it's just in good condition or not. And then, yeah, probably the third option does make the most sense to just scrap the, uh, the whole car and buy something else, buy a new car. But, um, yeah, it would be a really difficult choice to, to decide on what to buy. Um, definitely something manual because the current 86 is automatic and I've been always saying that I want to actually eventually manual swap it and engine swap it in, in, in some uh, time period. But, um, yeah, it would be really cool if, like, you know, an S15 or something like that would be really nice now or a JZX, but they're all like two, three, maybe more, maybe more than three million yen right now for a really nice one. So yeah, the pricing of all these cars has just gone ridiculously high now. So yeah, not sure, not sure what to do. If you were in my place, what would you do? Would you uh, swap the engine, fix the engine, or just scrap it and buy a new car? Let me know in the comments. Um, I'm definitely not gonna be able to survive for too long without a car. Uh, getting used to having a car is really, you know, kind of difficult to just, leave now because it's already been a month since I've you know had a car and going everywhere by train again like I did back in the days is is kind of frustrating and annoying and it kind of limits what you can do with your free time especially for someone who likes cars so I can't go to Daikoku now I can't go to like drift events I can't you know make vlogs and things like that so it is kind of uh it is kind of a bummer and it's really annoying so I really want to just get another car or fix this current one and be able to get back on the road and start doing these things again. Let's see what we can find on uh, Car Sensor. Car Sensor is like the most popular uh, used car website, whatever you want to call it here in Japan. So let's see what's uh, listed right now for about like 1.5 to 2 million yen. That's uh, manual and kind of fun to drive as well. This is probably going to be a little bit easier for editing, putting it on the uh, big screen and not having to screen grab and stuff like that. It's just going to be much easier for editing. So let's see, this is probably for the uh, price right here. I mean, let's just go with like, let's see, Fairlady Z is not a bad choice. And I could do like a Z33, that's not so bad. Let's put at 1.8 million yen and see what comes up. So this is the uh, whole country listing of Zs and yeah, like I thought there's going to be a lot of uh, 350 Zs. This is an automatic for 500, 600,000 yen full price, so about like 800,000 yen you can get an automatic uh, Fair Lady Z and we just said we're not going to do automatic so let's put just manual cars and wow that brings down the selection quite a bit let's see I, w I wouldn't mind rocking a Fair Lady Z although I don't really like this kind of orange color but let's just take a closer look now yeah, it looks pretty clean that's uh, 78,000 kilometers on the clock uh, no repair history that's 1.4 million yen yes that's just over uh, maybe 11 twelve thousand dollars looks very clean super stock Probably a good starting point for a, you know, a project car and stuff like that. Z33 could potentially be an option. Let's see what like the cheapest, I'm not even going to look at obviously Skylines or Skyline Line. Oh, actually, let's see a Sylvia first. Let's see what we can get if we were to do a 1.8 mil Sylvia. Wow, you can already see you can't really get too much. They're kind of in this 2, 2.5 million range. Oh wow, a little bit more. So you see like most of them are around two to three million yen so let's just put it at two point no i'll just put at two for now and see what we can get for a little bit more money that's a spec ss15 with 180,000. that's quite a lot of kilometers on it 190 i mean you know they're still very cool probably a lot of you will think that they're way cooler cars than uh well only 40 manual sylvias that are up to two million yen in the whole country as well that's quite crazy and all of them have repair history so you don't you know you have no idea how bad of a repair history it is. This one is clean, Q's S14 with 43,000. 43,000 kilometers is not so bad, I guess, but yeah, you get the idea. Unfortunately, it looks like uh, something cool in JDM, like a Silvio, or I don't even look at the JZXs because I know they're all beyond 2 million right now, but um, getting something that cool that would really, you know, stand out, I guess you could say, is just not going to be possible at this stage for me right now. Maybe something like a Z33. I actually really like um, 350Zs quite a bit. Uh, they're a very cool car. They're kind of similarly shaped to the GT86 as well. So that might be an option. Or maybe just another GT86. Um, definitely would have to be a manual one this time though. But yeah. We'll see how it goes. Um, if you're new here, please make sure to like and subscribe. I think we are just over 30,000 subscribers right now. Uh, that all happened thanks to like a viral short that kind of went crazy, went beyond like 7 million views. But 
yeah, I'll try to do a bit more uh, long vlogs now from now on, especially once I get a new car or fix the broken one. And yeah, make sure to uh, just like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what car you would like to see me get as the next uh, kind of project car or whatever you want to call it. See you in the next video.